Oh, happy day! It's Oberon and Neptune beat up the planet, and we're just horsing around. Oh, that'd be so much better when I put my mask on. I mean, they'll get it. I have, <laughs> I have confidence in our audience. I'm not wrong to have confidence in y'all, am I? I didn't yeah, think all so. one of them. Hey, there's at least, like, five views on every video, and I know three of them aren't me, so... <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, hey, Mitchell, never mind the body armor. Just show me your basement. Yeah. Come on. You're, you're, you're a friend, right? You can trust me, Mitch. So, uh, I, I heard, um, you know, the, through the, the internet told me that there was a Catholic school in Nashville that has banned a set of books in their library. Oh. That series is, uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Isn't it always like it, it's it's either that or like I don't know Scarlet Letter or anything else the they want to teach you in eleventh grade English? Oh, never mind. You have your mask on. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I, you know they they probably saw the word Scarlet and fainted. <laughs> uh, anyway, but this was this one's unique. The, the, yeah, why the why the fuck Harry Potter? What's what's up? Right, but don't don't fuck Harry Potter. He's no. underage. No. Okay. I mean, now he's not. Dan Radcliffe no, no, is a no. fucking straight hottie. <laughs> uh, circle back to that later. Anyway, don't shoot glass. Uh, they seem to have done so. I don't really believe when people have done this in the past that that they really were this crazy. Or at least this guy could look I up reacted. stories about that if they were. All right, uh, find a crowbar hmm. somewhere. Who in charge of this school? Uh, they banned the books because they believe the spells uh, in, in the uh, series, in the in the uh, children's fictional series Harry Potter, to be now. Uh, let me check my notes to make sure I get this right. Really? Uh, Every real. Ask him, they believe they're much. real. But, but, All of them. So they believe All some of the, the laziest figures. spell creation that I've ever seen in my life is like a thing that you well, can Well, never mind. I mean, we don't need them. Do? It seems immediately testable. Find you a know? crowbar. Oh, there's one in the garage here. Come <laughs> uh, get it. All right. right. I, I got this. Wingardium Leviosa. No. Uh, no. No, doesn't work. No, that didn't happen. Do I have the right stick? Oh. I need um, a phoenix. I probably... I can't do that on stream. <laughs> I can't jump. Throw the bag. What's the bag? What do you oh, mean you can't get enchanted? A I'm a paladin of suit. No, it's a body bag. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's, it's you... definitely my holy artifact. I, I bagged yeah. up the person that... Uh... But speaking of holy artifacts, I really can't believe that the grown adults uh, in charge of educating the future of America, or at least some of America, are scared of pseudo-Latin from young adult book series. We, uh, <laughs> we have... Uh, like, yeah, it's not even... It's this. worse than like pig Latin. Joined. Hell, Avada Kedavra just... So sounds we, like uh, I want a cadaver. Get into there. We'll, we'll yes, <laughs> it sounds. It sounds like you messed up uh, Alucard's name. <laughs> and then Dracula just goes, "God bless you." Uh, if you say it three times, he shows up all mixed up, like he's like it's like it's toes, head, knees, torso. He's just a straight up fucking Picasso. What have you done to me? <laughs> uh, uh, I hired David Cronenberg oh. to direct your movie. <laughs> so what am uh -huh. I doing with this crowbar? Uh, holding on to it. I mean, but I, I still don't get why they believed it. This is the same series that is predicated on dubious prophecy, child sacrifice, and talking to fucking snakes. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, that's a... That does make sense, right? Right? Oh, shit. You're 100% right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of on brand for them, really. Yeah. They have a whole 66 book series of that sort of thing. Well, I mean, when you've got 66 books, why do you need seven or eight movies? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I think they could have voted that down to seven. That's how they got to 66. In the, they could have voted that down to seven. Yeah, we don't we don't need some of these. Who needs fucking Leviticus? Man, these there's a lot of these epistles. Can we just call them one? Do, do we really need kings? That's a cloaker. And and four gospels? Do we need do we need four? I mean, they're all pretty much the same, right? Yeah, just just pick the best one, the most flowery one, the latest one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that, that one's hit, right? 
Got to keep Swordmouth Jesus, too. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, like, the fire and brimstone stuff at the end, that's kind of cool. So, what, you get the origin stuff, you get... I guess you got to keep in Leviticus for some of those fucking rules, whatever. I'm getting out of hand here, but I'm sure we could cut it down to seven is what I'm trying to say. And then they'd still make eight fucking movies out of it and charge me an extra 12 bucks. Uh, from some of the podcasts I've heard, they've made way more than eight. Fuck! So, we have a weekend dungeon to talk about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anything that's not that. that. So, uh, a lot of times I had to turn to Ragdoll uh, this week and say, I'm not putting that in my dungeon. <laughs> well, More than once, I've had to say, I've already put that in my dungeon. Don't call it out later. Oh my. So uh, the uh, the cryohydra is a load bearing boss, and the ceiling collapses. The pair players have one way to go into the tunnel. Deep into the tunnel, charge or die. Yeah, um, it it should be obvious. Maybe one of your PCs wants to stay. Let them play it out. Crush them with rocks, cause they they're like calling your bluff. Go ahead, it's fun. Give them a smush, just just a gentle smush. If you really want to let one of the other players save their ass at the very end, just to just to make hey, it. Hey, I sting finally have a, a use more. for Everett's black tentacles. There's always a use for Everett's black tentacles. <laughs> Fight me. Woo. All right. So um. Uh, so they follow the uh, flow of uh, ice cold water down the tunnel. Um, at the edge, they're confronted with a murky smell and a wall of weeds at the edge of what seems to be a pond or lake. Now, there's no edge to creep out onto as the lake is flush with the mouth of the tunnel. Okay. So, so they just kind of hit like a, a pool, a standing pool of water. Yep, it's it's like yeah, there there might even be bugs here. Oh yeah, there's bugs on uh, uh, underground bugs. These probably have some stingers, man. Ooh, yeah, yeah, those those aren't great. Wonder if there's a uh, good. They're level ten now, right? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, are there level ten bugs? I think there are. Well, let's check the bug type Pokemon. I mean, the bestiary for bugs. Okay. I mean the po. I mean. <laughs> when the PCs inevitably poke their heads through the weeds, they startle a collection of fish-like humanoids. So, so these are not Murlocs. I'm assuming these are Sahagan, the uh, the uh, Wizards of the Coast branded Murlocs. Yeah, um, they they can be called whatever you want. Um, but uh, yeah, I for now I'm just referencing them as fish, <laughs> fish, fishmen. Yeah, fish like humanoids, fishmen. And yeah, you know, they're, they they have you know, they're covered in scales, they got eyes on either side of their head, they have a ridge, they have webbed uh, everything, grasping spears or javelins. So I have found a CR10 bug. Yeah. It is a frost mite swarm. That's cool. I found a uh, a CR10 bug too. Yeah. It's later in the note. Cool. So if so, you uh, want to throw a frost mite swarm into the tunnel as they're coming down, just just to make things a little bit unpleasant and remind them that they're coming from the ice dungeon and that water is fucking cold. Yeah. In fact, uh, I would, if you want to do that, I would phrase it as they get out of the uh, collapsing ice dungeon at the last minute just behind you. Yeah, like make them come from the cryohydra. Yeah. Even like it fire, it shoots bees out of its mouth. It shoots bees. Oh, mouth. Well, that's nice. There's nine of them. You're 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 far kinder than I am, because if I mean, if it's got nine mouths, it's gotta have nine buttholes, right? That's how Why these are things being work. mean to the cryohydra. Just got beat up by the players. It's dead now. It doesn't care. I'm just saying, have it shoot bees out its ass. It's funny. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. It. It. <laughs> Ugh, all right, it vomits bees from every orifice. Oh, oh. There. I'm going to have its eyes. All 18 of them. Oh, all 18 eyes. It's really just a swarm of, uh, a swarm of frost mites. Yeah, and it's you, just a bunch of bees in a hydro costume. And you, uh, you don't have to make them, your characters fight them now. You make them just, like, sting them a little as they fly past into the water dungeon. 
That way they're or, just around or whenever you need they them. Cling to the ice wall. And they're like, hey, you don't bother me, I won't bother you. <laughs> Maybe they sting him at first and then they retreat to the ice wall. Yeah. Force him out of the tunnel. God. Yeah, yeah. Use them as a barrier. Push them back. Man. They're they're building yep. a hive. They're they're like I heard that honeycombing a hive off the ice wall. Uh, nature reclaims itself almost immediately here in this uh, uh, deeply ar arcane and thaumaturgical environment. Of course, it's over there. It's uh, nature, you scary. It's not nice to pool with Mother Nature. No. No. I'm gonna thunderclap. Uh, it's got a backhand. Don't don't yeah. fuck with Mother Nature. So anyway, uh, speaking of uh, fucking with people. Uh, the uh, me, pale eyeballs of these fish-like humanoids are sensitive to light, and the creatures have a tendency to hiss when shocked or in pain. Okay. So if they like light up their thing and poke their heads or hey, what are you? And they're all... Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, because these are going to be dark-dwelling creatures, right? Oh, yeah. This like, is deep under the, uh, under the mountain. Yeah, so they've got like dark vision, but don't have actual full light vision or something. Right. Yeah, or they, you know... Well, isn't that dark vision? It's like infrared, basically. They uh, see by heat. Yeah, yeah. Dark vision is they see by heat. Low light yeah. vision is just they have like something like a cat's eye that reflects extra light. I know your PCs are going to ask, oh, you know, oh. so we're, we're getting this deep lore for you here about their fish eyeballs. I mean, you want to know before you eat them. Yeah. Uh, so I've written this to give the players a choice. Mm -hmm. And I still want to force some combat. So... They are a tribe of fish people oh, in it. this dungeon. They have matching butt flaps. Yep. And exactly that. And uh, yeah, and they don't match those butt flaps over there. We have an alliance with those butt flaps with the shoulder pad over there. Got it. So it's uh, shoulders versus butts? Some, yes, yeah, shirts versus skins, basically. Got it. Uh... Yeah, and 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 they're, it's all different. It's like okay. it's like you're, it's like Romance of the Three Kingdoms. <sighs> Which one's woo? This one? Excellent. They don't have color. It's pretty dark down here. Mostly, it's no, the it's smell it's thing. Back. Yeah, color's not very useful. Honestly, there's probably a lot of mushrooms growing in with the weeds. Oh yeah. Oh oh, and that's why. Okay, so I did I did just write in a uh, an obvious priestess here. That's why she's the priestess. She gets the mushrooms to see things. Oh, really she sights to anyone else. Yeah. She sees things, does she? Oh, yes. Got it. Shaman. <laughs> Watch out it's for Shaman. It's really a weird hissing fish thing, though. But in the dark, nobody cares, right? <laughs> um, and for these fish people, everything's in the dark. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, the, the the players have a choice. If they're murder hobos, let them mur murder hobo. Okay. These have basic gear, hide armor, uh, maybe some weird magical trinkets or disgusting potions that are actually healing salves. Oh, they're actually like salvy. Yeah, like it's green because everything is green and smelly because everything is smelly down here. Ooh, I got some jazz for your salves. Yeah. When they're healing, they light up. That's like, the only thing that does it down here. Yeah. It's it's photoluminescent. So, if you need to heal real quick and you drop one of them salves, you're... Oh, Oberon? What? Oberon? Can I just tell you what a genius you are? Why? Because that's perfect. <laughs> like... No, because you know that bug swarm or that bug swarm I mentioned later in the notes? Yeah. What do you think attracts them? Light. Oh, and they go to heal someone and then, like, bam! Because what happens immediately... On the, uh, upon this hissing reaction, right? Yeah. Is that you immediately hear some other screams from lay it down further into the cavern. Okay, so it's a deep cavern is what I'm catching. It's a very deep cavern. This place is huge. Broad and echoey? Broad and echoey. It sounds horrible. And the yeah, tribe in front of you shrinks from it. They're scared. Okay. So you can talk here. Sir, you can either... <laughs> Fight all the fishmen and clear everything out and defeat uh, the effects of the occupant. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can role play with one and beat up the other. I suppose you could role play with the evil thing if you, like, pledged your loyalty to it. But, you know, only some parties do that. I mean, if they if they did the thing like, uh, you know, resurrected the giant's dog and stuff, they're kind of already on the way. So... <laughs> Don't you mean reanimated? Evil is evil. Uh, Poor dog. 
Poor Pupper. So yeah, if they have a Zombo Dog, they might have a chance of uh, interacting with the evil thing. Whatever this evil thing is. Right. I know what I would do in this situation. Get, give them the princess and run? Oh, take the princess and run! Oh, uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> get, me a, get me a fish woman! Fish women. All right. And I wrote down a diplomacy DC 18. I figure that's a pretty decent attempt because they're scared. They kind of want to say that they um, that sounded, you know, distance wise. It's it's this clan of fish men. And then they have then they say the name for their this local area that you know, makes up the, the area that the tribes live in. Don't have a name yet. Mm. Uh, and they, 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 they say, oh, that tribe was murdered by the foul one's servants. Yeah, so they, they, they were here, and, you know, the Agi rolled through and killed a bunch of them and left something horrible to kill the rest. It sounds like this is a big enough area that he just didn't. He was just, like, moving through. Yeah, like, yeah, he didn't, want, he didn't want his boots to get wet here. How wet is here? I mean, we've said it's very the water dungeon. Very wet. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, let me describe really quick the lake that this tribe inhabits. Um, and uh, when I was telling you about this earlier, Oberon, right, you you kind of hit the nail on the head. You said, so it's like rice patties? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. each of these lakes is a ring, like a, a and it's like a stone border that uh, could have formed naturally over time by these st huge stalactites overhead. Fuck you down. And it creates this narrow uh, space between the stalactites the and the come. pools. That kind of go diagonally down into the earth. Okay. This uh, restricts that third dimension for your flyers because you can just put too many bats in the stalactites and poor maneuvering, and then they just get oh, eaten by the bat. Yeah, Don't go up there. Uh, and then the lakes are just that. They're big, and they look shallow because they uh, very gradually get deeper until they get pretty much towards the middle, and then they shoot down. It's a neat, magical shape, right? It, uh, it just tells you that this place is magic. It's deep uh connection to the planes of earth and water or something like that all right so these uh fishmen you know live on the edges where the weeds are and you know hunt in the deep uh, center of these pools uh the this clan up here like has this really cold hit water and it's good to live up here because they can make more of the healing salve yeah so, so i wrote a little bit of dialogue for her here she uh won't talk about what attacked because she can't describe it, it would bring their attention upon her or something uh you know so they she, she just describes them as razors from above buzzing like mad if they agree to help and everyone's you know gotten up to friendly i guess uh she offers them a charm it's a smelly pond salve that she paints on their shoulders if it's funny enough you can use diplomacy checks to not look offended uh, uh -huh. And the charm just gives them, uh, like, five temporary hit points or something. Maybe we can bump that up later if we feel like it needs something. Trying to think of a good name for these oh this really series of lakes. Yeah. The obvious ones are taken, of course. Yeah. They're yeah. deep, and it's what? No. They're at home under the... No. No. Greasy, slimy mud ball in the in a hole? That doesn't really... No, it doesn't doesn't have a ring to it, and it's not what these people would call it anyway, because they actually like the place. That's well, that's. Well, what if they just like slime? Yeah, I guess. I should have put a slime in here. Oh yeah. You know what? You know what? Uh, Obron, actually, when um, if we if we throw up the map, just draw one on the map. Just write it right there. Boom, slime, and we'll just pick just a slime. Drop it right in the middle, and it's a gelatinous yeah. cube of gelatinous cubes. Everyone knows it's there. It's an optional fight. Maybe we'll put some loot under it. Give your players that, and then it's just this. It's the emerald weapon of our game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the emerald weapon. The emerald slime. That's that's what it's called. Point to it. Make it a nice big green dot. Emerald slime. What's that? Oh, that's the emerald slime. It's, it eats people. Don't go near it. It won't bother you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it moves slow, and it eats people. Don't yeah. We just it. don't go over there, but it's there. It's there. It's very easy to tell where it's going. So, um... Ooh. So, how about, um... Dim Tarn? Pardon? Dim Tarn as a name. So, Dim as in the light is low, and Tarn is just a body of water. Dim Tarns. There we go. I don't know. Make it one word. Squish it, put it together. Yeah, smoosh it. Give it a smoosh. The Dim Tarn? The Dim Tarn. Can fish... I guess fish... I guess fish jaws could say that, yeah. Dim Tarn. Are you just saying what I'm saying? Are you just saying what I'm saying? My name's Oberon and I'm an idiot. My name's Oberon and I'm an idiot. Ah, got him. Right. Ah, so, um, got him. Right. 
so on. We have this little uh, encounter table here. We have this little uh, encounter table here. That's what you sound like. That's you. (laughs) (laughs) So we have this little encounter table here. No, I'm not doing All right. <laughs> so, uh, we have a little encounter table of uh, groups of fishmen. And then they'll be exactly what we described, right? They'll be, uh, this one's got a loin cloth with slime on it. This one's got a loin cloth and a shoulder pad. That one's got the left shoulder pad. Yeah. And they're all different tribes. And they all hate each other. Uh, you run into various groups of those. I, I found two ideas that I like. I found a mudlord. And I'm just like, all right, just call it a fish, fish warrior. Don't say mudlord. What you gonna do about it, mudlord? Mudlord. Yeah, they could accidentally, <laughs> accidentally call him that. Mudlord is the disparaging name the other tribe uses for it. Oh, uh, here I was thinking of Chris Pratt didn't really get the kicking small aliens part in uh, on the first take. He falls down on the set. And now he's mudlord. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So. Um, yeah, so uh, these are not mud people. These are fish warriors. Uh, the other group I found that I liked were these fairies called Grodare. Instead, call them frogmen because they're kind of almost frog-like anyway. And ignore the fey traits and just re-describe what the, the uh, water blast ability is uh, on the Grodare sheet. Uh, maybe these uh, these uh, fish people, these frogmen, have little wands. Or maybe they shoot it from their mouths. I still like the exploding into a big water blast, though. That's I'm going to keep that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've, they've got, like, glands in their throats that can just produce these spells. That sounds great. And then uh, I have to find uh, so it's a very small school of fish. Uh, I'm really going to be looking for actual animals if I can. I don't think Megalodon, like, Megalodon would fit. I just want maybe a small shark. Like, I need two CR8s and four CR5s. When I find them, I'll link them. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's if they go across these lakes. Because I figure you go, you know, around the weeds and then, like, interact with the fishmen some more, and that's where you fight fishmen. Or if you go across the lakes, I guess fish, like flying fish or these big things full of teeth jump out of the lake and attack the players you gotta keep them uh you, you can't just you can't just not have a plan you can't just not threaten your players yeah yeah you gotta gotta shake them up a bit yeah. i mean ooh, what's the cr of a tamaranian i don't know oh that's in the fiend folio and that's problems in between me and the house where is it the monster manual too it's the it's the worst page in any monster manual the fiend folio Fiend Folio. Terror birds and flying sharks. Yeah, I just can't find it. I'm definitely not going to find it on the web, but that might be CR8, right? No, no those are CR4s. Like CR4, so... All of them are CR4s. Make it a uh, but yeah, you could do fl- those flying sharks. If you have the Fiend Folio, go ahead and whip those out. Those are the best thing ever. I love those things. The only other encounters in this dungeon, once you get tired, I, I guess, of mimicking fishmen voices... And frogman voices. <laughs> That's what you sound like. I like these. I like these frogs. I'm glad I found that. That was a good. That was a good thing. Uh, I did find something that's a shark esque. That's CR7. That would fit here, kind of. Yeah. What's it called? Bulet. Ah, uh, that's well. Um. Ooh, well, you could do a water bulet. I mean. Yeah, just give it a shark. water type. Just shark, shark. <laughs> The shark shark, not just the land shark. Why does it have legs? I don't know, man. Like, what, bump its armor class up by one, give it an extra hit die, and maybe, like, two more decks. That's where the armor class comes from. Sounds like a lot of work just to fudge it. (laughs) It's literally one... (laughs) You increase its decks by two and give it an extra hit die, and it's a problem. (laughs) All right, there's uh, there's an advanced bulette that's CR8. (laughs) fuck you very much <laughs> there's one with the right numbers so there done two sharks they are bulets okay <laughs> but 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 treat them like sharks make them swim give them a swim right, they're, speed they're uh, they're they're pale and, and ugly sharks because there's no light down here yeah, yeah, give them a swim speed give them a swim speed through rock too yeah so, so that way they can just disappear in the shallow parts yeah yeah there it is all right, so uh, yeah, once you're once you're done uh, role playing fishman voices, uh, throw them the chubasa. Chubasa da. 
Jubas to die. And in this case, it's the uh, the servant that that first fish priestess uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, I found an adamantine wasp swarm. Gee. Yeah. It's CR10. Uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty bad. Uh, it's adamantine. They got like damage reduction and stuff. So it doesn't necessarily have damage reduction because because it's a swarm. It has immune to weapon damage. Oh, so you gotta hit it with AOE, basically. Yeah, I'm swinging my sword at it. Okay, roll the hit. You hit it. Do damage. Okay, I'm not marking off anything on my sheet, but I'm not saying that. You swing ineffectually at the bees. You, uh, it's so hard to take out bees with a sword. Yeah, so uh, this is a course where spellcasters are gonna shine. You light this cave up. Literally. Yep. By it's the way, that was every time a, a magic spell, an opportunity for a spell came up in those Harry Potter movies so far. Every time I'm like, fireball? Yeah. Yeah, fireball f fixes almost every problem in Harry Potter. Yeah. Almost. Oh, I gotta fight this draft. Fireball. I like this Voldemort. Fireball. Yeah, fireball. Fireball kills more. Voldemort. Yep, yep. Sure, sure. Man, that ghost is watching me pee. Fireball. Yeah, fireball deals with ghosts. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Fireball everything. Yeah. Yeah, fireball cooks, uh, uh -oh. cooks corn chowder. Yeah. I want, yeah, yeah. Sure. It sure does. I <laughs> I want to play a 20th level wizard in, in one of these newer editions because you get signature spell. You just get to cast a third level spell twice a day. And it's fireball. Fireball. I have the best fireball. You could set fire to the rain. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use up my maximum level spell slots just on meta magic feats and fireball. I'm just going to call them Goodness. different things. Wizard what's his nuts is magnificent uh, incandescent orb. Perfect. There you go. It's a fireball that does max damage. That's what it is. It's a... Well, the maximized fireball. That's yep. it. If you're hearing what I'm hearing... Oh, what is that? That means it's, uh... Time for next time on Oberon and Neptune Beat Up the Planet. Where we're gonna do something else. And the horsey boys are back at it again. I lied. We're not done. <laughs> Fooled <laughs> you. <laughs> Fooled you. Time right. to blow some shit up. Adamantine West wasps form, right? Yep. Yep. And um, my ads for this. Well, the environment's easy. The environment is the unpleasant lake surface and the sharp ceiling. Sure. The occupant, uh, you know, it, it brought this swarm into being somehow and then tasked it with terrorizing this place because it annoyed him or something. It got mud on his shoes. Right. It smells like fish down here. Oh, and this my cloak is never going to stop glowing for some reason. Uh, wait, was it? Press I'm gonna make. I'm gonna press the digitate right here under my nose, right here under my nose. Oh, that's oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, the ads that I had found aren't um, necessarily small either. Yeah. Yeah, they are CR sixes. Oh well, that's that's perfectly all right. I'm sure those are easy to handle. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> Just throw some CR6s in this mid-boss. Sure. Yeah, I would... Maybe lead with one of those? Oh, like like they're the hook to the rest of the fight? Yeah, because while you're... It, it, like, sends this mist at you that you have to fight while it slaughters a fishman or frogman tribe. Oh, it pops them like water balloons. Yeah, what, whatever's around. You know. Oh, man. Can you imagine that? Bang, bang, boom! They're all doing their final, you know, death attack, and it's not doing it because it's just water. <laughs> and they're, I'm assuming, immune to water. Yeah. Well, they're not, but I'm not gonna have my world do my work for my players. It's got plot armor. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling you it because it looks cool. Oh no! I can't save the frogmen because this thing is in my way. Oh no! Oh no! What is this thing? It's a, it's a Mitsu. Me, me too? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, oh it's a yeah. mist that's, uh, visited Japan and coming back to the States. Oh, and here I thought it was a mist that really enjoyed Meteor Garden, the Taiwanese soap opera version of, uh, Hanayori Dango. Too deep, deep cuts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> too deep. Uh, well, <laughs> they do say the first cut is the deepest. Um. Oh. <laughs> All right. So this meets uh, you. Yeah, so uh, 
they're CR6s. You can have one or two of them. The party should be able to dispatch them easily. Uh, the Adamantine Wasp Swarm is a CR10. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they're a problem. Yeah, they're a huge problem. They are what's killing the fishmen. Go ahead and do whatever with them. It, it, it's cool. They can um, have big cinematic fights with this. Like I said, the, the wizards and sorcerers are really going to shine here. Or the druids, because we've already established they can summon swarms right against the swarms. So I'm like, why do you even have spellcasters? I'm playing a druid. Anyway, I would put that somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, to break it up, because there are just really just fish and fishmen to fight here in this big, kind of almost cinematically big setting. With it is, it's kind of, it's actually mostly empty now that like a lot of these fish people are dead. You know, a lot of a lot of things happened here. It's 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 a creepy kind. Of, you might you'll run across random fishmen corpses that are just shredded because of these adamantine wasps. Yeah, there's a, it's it's a very and it's dark here. It's it's. It's not a pleasant place to be. Um, yeah, but you, you'll encounter the rest of the fish on the way back down, or on the way all the way down to the end of the dungeon. And uh, then standing uh, in before you, uh, guarding uh, the uh, the uh, tunnel out of this place, is a silvery uh, female figure. But it's clearly not human. Uh, it it right. is dressed uh, in armor, a full helmet. Hmm. It has a big spear. And okay. uh, giant iridescent wings and, and feelers coming out of its helm. It's a giant metal wasp. Uh, oh, no. Is she controlling the swarms? She's mad. Well, yeah. I mean, if we squished the swarms and she's a yep. giant controller. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they weren't the servants that you were warned about. Giant, shiny-ass wasp. All right. So we do we need a yeah. stat block for her, or do you already have one at the ready? Uh, I haven't selected one. Uh, I have, my notes are find a demon and a CR7 helper demon and just say they are, you know, bug skin. All right. Well, that's... So um, I found a hydro demon. You know, I'm going to leave this one as it is. Uh, she clearly captured one of the frog creatures in this place and did something to it. Yeah, feel feel free to feel free to maybe not be so aggressive in this fight if you want to let the Hydra Demon's hit points run out first. Uh, it depends on what your players do, I guess. What you know, the, the feel for your um, your campaign. Uh, maybe maybe this uh, bee woman, this bee knight, is a brilliant tactician and really does kill. Just swat the healer first. Maybe she's just brilliant. Do that. I don't know. Maybe that it's your game. Do whatever. I can't shoot the healers first because they're all druids. Yeah, they're all tanks. Yeah, I'd have to shoot everyone first. Well, it's a good. It's at least good to have a to-do list. Rocks fall, everyone dies. Oh, well, there's a sturge demon. Yeah, fuck the word sturge. Just say wasp. Just ignore the, yeah. the whole description. Just add the fly speed. Say it's this bee knight instead of the description there. Because everything else works. Like immune to electricity and poison, resist acid, cold fire. It's evil. It has damage reduction. Uh, it has a decent pool of hit points. This is everything I was looking for. It's even large. Maybe you can make both of these things large. Uh, this one, the Sturge Demon's large as well, yeah. Yeah. It's a CR-10, and it does have a neat ability of when it uses spell-like abilities. Uh, it drones and buzzes, and creatures within a 60-foot spread that hear it must succeed on a will save or fall into a comatose sleep for a d4 hours. That's interesting, but then it doesn't have any spell-like abilities. Oh no, it does. At will, darkness, dispel magic, greater teleport, see invisibility, telekinesis, and once per day summon for uh, um, two for the purposes wretches. of this encounter, I'll say it's already summoned. So it's got telekinesis, see invisibility, greater teleport, dispel magic, and darkness. Yeah. Um, as a DM, I don't think I would go too hard on these, and I, I mean maybe even the will save is a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. I mean, at tenth level, uh, if your if your saves are bad, what is it? Is it a seven, a six? Uh, tenth level, yeah, I think it's a six plus your modifier, which is probably a plus two, so eight. So you'd have a uh, twelve out of yeah, uh, you'd have twenty roll, you'd have chance to roll a twelve. Of, plus. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to roll a twelve plus, so that forty percent chance of success. Yep. Or fall asleep for a d four hours. Yeah, that's a bit much. It won't be the spellcasters, but it will be the tank. And that's okay. I mean, it's a functions otherwise as the sleep spell, so... Yeah, you can wake people up with that. Yeah, it's easy to wake up, so I guess that's not too bad, but if nobody wakes you up, it's four hours you just lost. There we go. That's great. Call it a call it a wasp and give it a fly speed, and that's all you need to do. Yep. 
and pull back a little bit on the uh on the drone special ability this the yeah. way this is worded seems like you're just always gonna be asleep unless your players roll like gods i feel like always make this 20 will save but on the other hand the, the saves that i have been making my table make they seem to make them a lot very rarely have i seen something like a 12. so you got a stat block for both of those it's a nasty wasp demon don't let it a lay eggs in you just a recommendation yeah, yeah no definitely sell that as an option like uh, you're not sure if that's a stinger or an ovipositor but you're also sure you don't want to find out assume it's both assume, assume it's both and on that unsettling note uh i think that's a good place to end it for the week Yes, end it for the week face down in an underground rice paddy about to die and give birth to a thousand wasps. The wind howled at the washboard, sleeping underneath the moon. Our plan was hatched in a briar patch where lovers shook and swoon. Their lips stained with violet, their tongues tied into knots. To the lonely beds, their secrets, but we found our